Welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina. I have a wonderful fella coming up. He is my first responder of the month, Mike Tipple from Bloom Township Fire Department. He is a firefighter and paramedic. Really cool story as to why he decided to do what he does and he's done for several years. You just have to stick around and you'll find out all about him. And then a fella who I've had on a few times before, he is also a sponsor, not he, the organization, Fairfield Area Humane Society. And he's gonna talk about fosters because fostering animals, cats or dogs, and I'm not even gonna tell you any more than that either folks, because I want you to stick around just to hear their stories and what they've got to share. Some really cool stuff going on in Fairfield County. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. You are watching Down Home with Tina. Life is unpredictable. That's why estate planning is important. Estate planning provides you comfort and peace of mind knowing that you're taking care of your loved ones and ensuring your legacy lives on just as you envisioned. You lived a life that is beautifully and uniquely yours. You deserve an estate planning attorney who understands that and creates a plan as unique as you and in the best interest of your loved ones. You deserve the local, trusted, experienced attorneys at Dagger Law. The Lancaster Festival returns for its 38th season, July 21st through the 30th. This year, we proudly present Rick Springfield on July 23rd and Lady A on July 30th. Reserve seating and general admission tickets are available at LancasterFestival.org by phone at 740-687-4808 or at the box office located at 117 West Wheeling Street in Lancaster. For the full lineup, visit LancasterFestival.org. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. This is my first responder of the month, brought to you by Bay Food. And I am so excited to have Mike Tipple from Bloom Township Fire Department. Okay, so you're my very first. I know that I had Thomas Williams on one time. That's been quite some time, but it's my very first reaching out into the county. So I'm very excited to have somebody from a township to be a guest on, just to talk about the way things are. Because I know just from the knowledge that I have from years past, and you and I were talking a little bit about it before we got started about it uh, how it's changed and how it's different so I'm really excited but before we get started I want to welcome you to the show Thanks. thank you and Mike will you please share with folks why did you decide to be a firefighter paramedic well uh, it wasn't something I thought about when I was younger like I wasn't one of the kids that saw the fire truck and decided oh I want to be a firefighter from a young age I actually worked in uh, worked at Fairfield Medical Center in the surgery department and was a patient attendant and was I'd go in the rooms and help clean after surgeries and occasionally I get the opportunity to actually be in the surgery not doing the surgery but kind of witness some of the surgeries and all the staff at Fairfield Medical Center was so nice and they would share kind of what was going on what, like what these people med people's medical problems were and they would do the surgery and I'd see the organ get removed or, oh or whatever and get fixed so I was just, I, I loved it. I don't know why blood didn't bother me and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I loved it. And then I had a friend that was in the fire service and he was like, man, you gotta get into, you gotta become a paramedic. I mean, they do this sort of thing. And it was after that, I decided to go, go to fire school. Cause I obviously there's some places that you can just be a paramedic, but usually in the state of Ohio, you usually have to be a firefighter and a paramedic. Now you can yeah. work for private ambulance companies, but most likely, they take firefighter paramedics. So went to fire school, went to medic school, and the rest was history. How many years have you been firefighter paramedic? I've now? been a firefighter for 13 years. Oh. And I think a paramedic probably 11 years and yeah. full time with Bloom for 10 years. So what's it been like so far? How I love do you it. like it? Yeah. I love it. I tell a lot of people that um, I feel like I cheated life uh, getting that job because it doesn't, I mean, they always tell you, you you want a job that doesn't feel like a job, and this is definitely. For me, this is the way it is. I love, I love my job. Love the guys I work with. Um, it's a brotherhood. I mean, they, you hear about yes. that all the time. It mm -hmm. is, it's real. You know, these guys. I mean, we eat dinner together. Yep. Uh, we train together. We even sleep in the same room together. So it's a second family for sure. Do you ever play pranks <coughs> on one another? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's the way you keep going, right? And that yeah. may be a way to like get through the toughest. Not that you're doing a prank on a bad sure. night, but. You oh, know. No, there's tons there's tons and tons of pranks uh, not as much anymore <laughs> I mean it used to be I mean times have definitely changed since yeah. I first started but uh, yeah we've done some pranks yeah I mean nice pranks nothing nothing yeah. bad nothing like damaging or anything like no that. right but right laugh and we we still 
talk about some of those from years ago too. So, so do you, oh yeah, you got it. That's what oh. sometimes do you still have those stories where you just laugh so hard. Well, I don't know about you, about you, but I still to this day, and me and my best friend may have shared the same story twenty times. Mm-hmm. But if we still sit down and yeah. we're in the moment. I laugh again as if it just oh, happened sure. and tears in our eyes just because well and the stories always get embellished too like they always, <laughs> they always change a little bit and get way worse than it really was but that's kind of part of it <laughs> right right yeah. so uh, what is one of your favorite things about the job um, I mean it's kind of like a stereotypical answer but helping people I mean it, it really is nice to be able to go in and uh, you know see people at their worst and then being able to maybe save their life uh, a lot of times people come back to the station and say, hey, you know, thanks for doing what you did. And, you know, it is our job, but it, it's definitely a, a rewarding process. But I would say that's probably my favorite. And then the other is is just being with the guys, you know, just spending yeah. time with these guys and, and getting to know each other and having a good time, really. It's, it's awesome. What gets you guys through the tough times, the tough days? Honestly, I mean, you kind of hit a little bit on it with the pranks. We don't do a lot of the pranks, yeah, but yeah, yeah. We, we laugh. We talk about it. Um, the fire service has really um, come through in the past several years talking about bad runs and, and not mm-hmm. kind of putting these things, um, trying to hide these things because there's a lot of mental illness in the fire service. Um, PTSD is something. Yeah, as for well. sure. Yeah, and it's one of the things that you might know might excuse me you might not know you're even dealing with right until it just cut after cut you know run after run it kind of builds up over time. Um, but they talk about talking about these runs afterwards. So we have like debriefing. So if there's a really bad run or even a bad fire run, uh, maybe a duty day after, we'll mm-hmm. all sit down and talk about, hey, what mm-hmm. what could we have done better? What can, you know, those sort of things. So is it <clears throat> is it tough turning it off to go home to the family? Um, it's sometimes when when they're really bad. Yeah. Some of those kind of get like, and, and some people are gifted with just keeping it all business yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And i think god gave me that gift is I, i've been able to i've been able to i can handle it you know i and mean you knew it before you got started sure. what you were expecting because you had already <clears throat> seen the trauma of people right. on the surgery table right but it's a lot different like when you're seeing yeah. somebody looking at you like oh my god i need help oh, it's a lot different yes, than somebody under somebody. anesthesia so Very you have true. the urgency and the adrenaline dump and the just the chaos that sometimes happens in our job but you don't know it until you get it, it. You get exposure to it, so you can think you want to be a firefighter. You can think you want to be a paramedic, but there might be one bad run that you go on, and you're like, "Oh, maybe, maybe this maybe isn't for me." Just, yeah, you know, and that happens sometimes. Some people are like, yeah. "Hey, you know, that I didn't realize it was going to be like this," and then some people come out and like, "You know, I can handle that." You know, that was a, yes. that was kind of a rush, um, but I can handle it. And I feel like yeah. that's happened to me. I I, I think that, that it was a gift from God. For Absolutely. me to be able to handle those sort of high pressure situations, and all, all the guys I work with are, are the same too. I'm tough I pressure and handling it. You know, have the utmost respect for our fire, our police, any of our first responders that are out and ready to go. Because I would be calling my best friend if I cut my little finger <laughs> and saying, "Oh my gosh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not that. I'm not that bad. You know, it's <laughs> I'm not funny that, that dramatic about what's it. What's funny but about I that? I cringe when people tell me about injuries and things. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's so different though when it's happening at your own house. Like like when we really? go, it, it is. You can ask any fireman this. If we go on a nine one one call, it's business. I mean, your hand, it's somebody else's issue, but it's business. But if there's an emergency at your house, I mean, we we still have all our training, but it seems like it kind of goes out. Like if it's your ch- own child that's hurt, really, it's not like you can go business. I mean, it is. Oh my gosh, it's my it's kid. Freaking out. Someone call help. Someone personal. call for help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's totally different when it's happening to you. Wow. And I've had to call, luckily, not very often, but I've had to call 911 a couple times. And I remember picking up the phone going, like, Oh my gosh, I'm getting ready to talk to a dispatcher who's going to ask me what yes. is going on. You yes, know? yeah. And you have and I got to keep my composure. And, yes. You know, and so. think clearly yeah. about what it is. And it's crazy because, I mean, it is adrenaline dump, adrenaline dump when you're dialing 911. Oh, absolutely. That's a crazy absolutely. Aspect. So you had talked or mentioned about <clears throat> it being different from back then to what it is now Mm -hmm. because back then there used to be volunteers and stuff Mm -hmm. so what's it like right now and and the whole recruiting bit of what's going on in the fire departments it's actually uh times have changed a lot i was actually the last generation in our fire service um of volunteers so we would come in and we'd become volunteers we'd sign up for evening shift and Mm -hmm. we'd come in the morning shift um and the guys would train us we'd go through a book and, and get through it and you would think at the end of it you maybe become a part-time firefighter mm-hmm. maybe get through fire school emt school paramedic school 
and then op- maybe have an opportunity full time. But times have changed a lot. People yeah. need to make money. I mean, it's hard to have somebody come in. They got a wife and kids. They mm-hmm. want to make a career out of it to come in and just work for free. Right. So we don't even have volunteers anymore in our fire station. So now it's just you need to have some fire cards, uh, an EMT card, and then we go through an interview process and hire from there. So nice. that's how we recruit is through our part time. But we're not the only ones that are having problems even with that. Getting part time yeah. firemen is very difficult. A lot of cities and stuff are starting to do laterals, <sighs> lateral hires, you know, to, okay. to bring somebody in like that. It, and, and it's. Is it because it's part time, or what do you guys consider as part time? Part time is just they're like a they're a non union bargaining member. Okay. So it's I look at it like an apprenticeship. You know, it's it's kind of a process where and, and a lot of cities don't do it. They have uh, civil service, but townships a lot of times they do part time, mm-hmm. and you get to know them. You could get to pick the best, you know, the best quality guy out of yeah. the, out of the group or the most senior guy. Um, Typically, how many? hours a week is it for a part-timer compared to what it is considered for a full-time? Gotcha, gotcha. So a full-time fireman works every third day typically, mm-hmm. unless they're a 40-hour yeah. guy. Um, a part-time guy on at our fire department, and a lot of fire departments are doing this, are every sixth day. Oh, okay. So it's like skip a day and then they work for 24 hours. Okay. And, you know, and that's how we do it. We just separate them and it's a set schedule. They don't have to put in for days. It's just every sixth day they show up. Okay. They're on the same crew, same guys. And we found out to be the, the best, and I think the part-time guys like it too. Yeah, yeah. Well, they can have other careers. Yeah, a lot of times they'll, they'll marry that up with another fire department and work the opposite oh, six day. Oh, nice. So then yeah. they'll do every third day like a, like a full-time fireman. And I know we don't have a whole lot of time, but you had, I want to talk a little bit about this drone program. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is really cool that folks need to know about. Yeah. Yeah, so last year uh, we had a guy that um, – helped write a grant. I actually helped assist him write a grant. It was Chris DeBoer. He works for our fire department. Awesome guy. Really gifted writer. Uh, wrote a grant through South Central and South Central partnered up with us and paid for half of a drone. Uh, this nice. drone is fully equipped with a thermal imaging camera um, and we have two commercial drone pilots on the fire department. I'm one of them and uh, Lieutenant Ciperone is the other one. But the drone program is really cool. Not a whole lot of people know about it yet. Um, but we're probably one of, or the possibly the only fire station in Fairfield County um, that actually has one. So if somebody has a missing child, mm-hmm. a missing adult, someone with dementia, um, our thermal imagery camera can fly in the air and we can see them, that's, you know, they stick out like a sore thumb. So it's pretty that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And not, it's not just for Bloom Township and no, the Fairfield no, County. You can guys call can us. anywhere, no. like, well. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, anybody who needs us, we can come. But the problem is we're not on it 24-7. Mm-hmm. So whenever one of our pilots are on duty, um, we can provide that service for them. Perfect. So, okay, you're yeah. my first responder of the month, and I want to thank you so much. Was there anything else you wanted to say, though, before we get going? No, I just appreciate <laughs> you having me on the show, and I actually I, I love the show that you do, and oh. you bring positive energy to, to everybody. It's so Thank cool. you, Mike. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. So I have a little gift in here, Ava Jewelers. Um, a certificate to that and then some tea cookies and I know I've thought about this over and over again I give candles I don't even know if any firefighters <laughs> no, use candles you know but <laughs> I do love candles. I tell I my do. wife please buy some candles because I love well I love you know what for her you are both <laughs> awesome. maybe I'll tell her I'm like hey I bought well. you a candle today babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until she sees the show. Yeah. She'll be like, you right. pranked me. You she'll say, no, she'll say prank. My yeah. kids, they call it pr- a prank. Yeah. I was like, you pranked me? Right. Yeah, you pranked her. You took yeah. the prank to home. No, <laughs> thank you so much, yeah, Mike. for sure. Thank <laughs> for you. For what you do. Yeah. Folks, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back with Corey Schoonover from the Fairfield Area Humane Society. You're watching Down Here with Tina. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. 
Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Downhill with Tina is brought to you by these amazing sponsors. And speaking of amazing, <laughs> the one and only amazing <laughs> Corey Schoonover. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know what, Corey? You have done so many things in the last... Holy Moses, 12 years mm. it's been? Almost, yeah. almost. In July, right? 12 in July? June, yeah. June, yeah. June. You're for close. the Fairfield Area Humane Society. Mm -hmm. And what's been going on? I know what season it is, but I don't know if everybody else out there watching knows what the season is for the Humane Society um, right now. I would bet everybody knows it's kitten season. <laughs> why? Um, I wonder why. <laughs> if you don't have a. It's kitten season. Um, yeah, we actually, um, I'm glad that I was able to come on this time of the, so May, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever noticed, like, and, and you hear them all the time, every, every day there seems to be some interestingly made up national something day, right? Yeah. So that's the same in the pet world. Um, and May happens to be um, National Foster Care Month. I love it. <laughs> Which is important for us this time of year uh, because yes. of kitten season. Um, we we have been, it started off a little slow mm -hmm. and I, I jinxed us. I made the comment yeah. and then boom, like all of a sudden. You made the comment to me, right? And mm -hmm. you were going to come on and we were going to talk about. Yeah. So at that point, so... And, and the reason that we're talking about it, and I think, and I don't, I hate to make light of it, but you almost have to because otherwise it, it just wears you down. Yeah. Um, but it seems like there's a never ending supply of cats and kittens, and, and we get a lot of um, feedback mm -hmm. that, well, we're always full or we don't take in, you know, cats or kittens. Well, we take in over 800 of them a year. Uh, it, it, that's just unfortunately sometimes not enough. So a couple right. of years ago, we really started focusing on um, creating a foster kitten program um, where we actually recruited um, people in the community that were familiar with fo either fostering kittens or maybe wanted to try it, um, whether it's, and, and what I mean by that, so any kitten that is not old enough or not big enough for us to fix. Do pe we do pediatric spay and neuter, so mm -hmm. they have to be at least eight weeks old and weigh over two pounds. Mm -hmm. Anything younger than that or smaller than that, we try and find a foster home for um, because it's that's a better environment for them to get healthy, stay healthy, uh, gain the weight that they need to gain, uh, and not sitting in the shelter, you know, because it, with that, we bring in a lot of um, sick and injured mm -hmm. cats. Um, so we really don't want our kittens that have, you know, not so good immune system sitting there. At, oh, you know, right. In the same place. So last year alone, we brought in and uh, 230 plus kittens went through our foster program. Oh, my goodness, With Corey. about 15 foster homes. So, oh my goodness! Um, and you're familiar with one of them. I, I mean, am very. And familiar. our fosters are amazing, and they actually get really into it. Some of them have their own Facebook page for their foster mm -hmm. kittens, and that's r really amazing because then everybody kind of gets involved with it. Um, adoptions happen a lot faster with with that. You can so. see the socialization mm -hmm. firsthand right there on the social media when they do that. And it's amazing yeah. with what these foster, well, meet the fosters as yeah. this one in particular, are doing with these kids. And you can see the passion that mm -hmm. they have mm -hmm. and the time volunteering their right. time to do this. Right. And, and who's, you know, I think the biggest question um, we get is like, well, what, what's really involved? What does it take? You know, we yeah. provide everything uh, supply wise and medical wise. You just provide that, you know, whether it's from if you have experience in bottle feeding, because we mm -hmm. get a lot, unfortunately, we get a lot of situations where kittens are brought in to us super young. I mean, we had some brought in the other day where 
they didn't have their eyes open. They still had the umbilical cord attached, so they're only a couple days old. Now, whether something happened to mom or, you know, us as humans, you know, that emotion kicks in and we think that we're act- we're, we're helping them by taking them, but um. in reality, there are a few things to look for. And, you know, I don't get into that whole thing, but kind of yeah. Google, you know, what you should be considering or looking for. If kittens are quiet and they look clean, then mom's somewhere around, so you should just leave them be for the for that time. Um, right. But so we have ones that come in. You know, some of them might be eating food on their own, but they they just need. We call them weight gainers. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, you spend a few weeks um, fostering them. Um, so it, it's it's rewarding, and it's kind of like. So I'm uh, a new grandpa, uh-huh. and I love it because my grandson comes over and hangs out. And then you send them home. Okay, <laughs> right? So, yeah. So the kitten foster things, <laughs> kind of that. Me. You don't want to make that. You, maybe you can't make that long term, fifteen year commitment to a cat. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and I know the ones in particular that <clears throat> are friends of mine. They have cats of their own, mm-hmm. and I'm sure she could easily take so many on. But no, I, yeah. I don't know. I've never had a conversation with her. But I would think it's helping. It's helping you guys and helping these cats to have, once again, the socialization because it's yeah. no different than puppies. Mm-hmm. When you socialize a cat with other animals and other cats and dogs because mm-hmm. she's got a dog in the home, then it teaches them how to behave yeah. with mm-hmm. other animals. The, yeah, so they're already familiar with the home environment. So yes. when we are putting them up for adoption, they're already... That are trained, right? Yeah, they're, they're kind of already in the game. Yeah. And it's the transition is easier and, and that helps make for a better forever home. So, um, you know, there's so many good things about that program. Um, We have been recruiting more recently, Mm -hmm. uh, and we also decided this year, okay, we're going to, we've never done puppy fosters before. Okay. Okay. Um, We have started recruiting for that as well. Nice. because so we help four or five different shelters and rescue groups in southern ohio and we could get into that on why there's so many (laughs) puppies down there but we won't but we get i get messages constantly you know do you have room for puppies and and things like that and we have we have a puppy wing um but you can only fit so many in there Mm -hmm. and then at the same time we don't want them in there maybe something happened and we're getting them in at six weeks old so we don't necessarily want them sitting in there for a few weeks so to get them into a home and we won't like bombard you with you know it's whatever as far as fostering goes what you can handle right does that make sense Mm -hmm. so i'm not going to say hey first time foster here's a litter of 11 puppies good luck you know that that defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do right but um just you know, if you're interested or if it's something that you at least have questions on, mm-hmm. just, you know, give us a call, shoot us an email. We actually have a, an application. So we do screen our fosters. Okay. Um, so our foster coordinator will send you an application. Essentially, we make sure, like if you have other pets, we, we want to make sure that they're up to date on vaccines and oh, yeah. make sure everyone in the house stays healthy. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then... Y- you probably, you know, we have some foster failures, we like to call them. Foster yeah. fails happens, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it just sometimes You know, just you kind of get attached yeah. to, that, to that special one. We have a pet of the month, something we're starting mm-hmm. this month. And while we were talking beforehand, Meet the Fosters took in some a, a yeah. family, a cat and her kittens, yep. a female mom. And then you found yourselves in a situation where you had ended up with was it five kittens total and two went to meet the fosters? Is that how many? I, I'm trying to recall. Yeah, yeah. So and they already had a nursing mom yes. and with like three kittens, I think. And we were trying to find, find a bottle the, feeder okay. for these other ones. So oh, they that's were able to was. take two from from the new group and put with the mom and her current kittens. And it, it actually and, works more than you think, but the mom took on the two orphan kittens, and like now, her own. The new, the, now a new family unit has been created. So it's a very, 
Very cool. Awesome. So what's the cat's name? The Mom's cat's name, name Julietta. Julietta. Julietta, and then the kittens, you if you follow Facebook, meet the fosters. I don't know any of the other fosters. I would love to highlight yeah. them as well in months to come. Maybe they'll have a cat that we can talk about as well, just like Julietta. But Julietta is our cat of the pet of the month mm -hmm. because when you take in an, another animal from another mother, it's just awesome. Yeah, Corey. You're, you're due to be pet of the month. Fairhumane.org or give us a call, 740-687-0627. <laughs> I knew it. He's done this a time or two. <laughs> Thank you so much, Corey. You're welcome. Folks, I'll be right back with a positive quote. It's down him with Tina. The central and midwestern U.S. averages more than 850 tornadoes each year. And lately, the number of floods has been rising in the region, too. So chances are, there will be more twisters and floods near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are, you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are, they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. It is Down Home with Tina. Thank you so much for watching. You want to watch my show Facebook? Welcome to watch it Facebook. You can watch it on YouTube. CLN, your hometown connection. Also, don't forget about Spectrum 1021. It begins to air on Wednesdays and you can watch it throughout the week for that. So I recently took on a new venture. It took me some time to get through it and to do it. I think I'm kind of one of those people that I, I am a go-getter. I like to do things and try new things, but sometimes it takes me some time to really get in it. So I just recently started to become a real estate agent and I have gotten my first house in contract. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because this little message that my daughter had shared with me, because when you are trying to help somebody find a home, then you want to find the best, I think. That's me anyways for them. And so you get a little nervous when it comes to a part in it where you go in to put in the offer, especially these days, because if any of you know anything about real estate, there are usually multiple offers within 24 hours. So, you know, I'm doing my thing and I'm, I'm getting to where I am with it and we're getting ready to do this part of the contract and the details of it. And I'm just like so nervous. And my daughter knows this and she goes, mom, now if it's meant to be, then it will be. And she's 17, folks. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I love sharing positive stories and positive quotes with folks to help them, and I love getting them back in return. So I'm just so grateful that I have somebody in my life telling me the same thing. Sometimes we just have to understand that if it's meant to be, then it will be. Folks, I hope you have a wonderful week. God bless. Until we meet again, hugs and blessings. I'll be back next week. It's Down Home with Tina.